for Classic team is going to be an excellent match. And this is captained by uh, a young man named Kevin McGear, and this team is young, but they're fearless. So you can never know what to expect from these young kids when they get on television. Uh, the winner of that match, of course, will go, in, go, go against our tournament leaders, the Hunky Classic team. Uh, this is a team captained by John Gaines and uh, himself, uh, I believe, 1991 National Resident Pro Champion. And, of course, uh, the anchor man on that team is one of the best uh, young players to come, uh, come about in, uh, on the pro circuit in a number of years, Rick Steelsmith, who was a 1987 uh, Masters champion and also the 1988 PBA Rookie of the Year. So we have a lot of individual talent. The, the question is, will they match up as strong teams? And it, will it come down again as it has seemed to most recently every week to the anchorman? And if it does, we, we're in for some real excitement. And let's go now. Damon Cardwell is with us again this week, Lane Side, and will be giving us his thoughts and some thoughts with the players as we go along. Damon? Well, thank you, Jay. It was incredibly tight this weekend at the Team Challenge. At one point during the Baker match play, only 100 pins separated first place team from the ninth place team. So stick around. We'll be right back with teams that made the show, Sports Street and the Hoinky Classics. The Hoinky Super in their forest green and... Sports Street Classic in their purple. And here is Brian O'Keefe to start things off. O'Keefe, who is 21, a student at the University of Nebraska. The Cornhuskers in that big Orange Bowl game coming up. And he came up a little short. And a difficult spare right out of the box here, the 2-5. And... Uh Generally, you want to play this on the left side of the lane. Keep it down there real hard and straight. Not let the ball hook away from it. Earl, we have 57 teams that participated here from 40 cities and 12 states. So another fine field was on hand here. And O'Keefe picks it up. Leading off for Sports Street Classic, here is Gary Daroshevsky. He owns the Classic Lanes in Milwaukee. Three ABC titles, 82 team all events, 83 all team events, 89 doubles, and a little problem to begin with here. Well, everybody's a little nervous, I think, starting out, Jay, which is typical when you get the te television cameras on you. You get out there and you get a little, a little anxious, and you don't really get out of the ball quite as cleanly as you might like. And he leaves the bucket, the, the two, four, five, eight. He wants to get the ball between the five and the two pin, just kind of like a strike ball. Just move your feet a little bit to the right and try to keep the ball in play here on your strike angle like that. Got a crossover and got him. So you've seen the... First bowler for each squad. This is Brian Himmler. Brian lives in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's 21 years of age, a professional bowler, and has won PBA regional title to his credit. Oh. My, my. Now, <laughs> when you hit the head pin and only get four out of a full rack, I you know you've got some you, major problems. I was going to ask you about that. Well, here he's got the three, the four, the seven, the six, the nine, and the ten. And the only chance he has is to get the ball between the three and the six. The ball will take out the nine and have the three pin go across the lane and take out the four and the seven. You didn't used to see these kind of, uh, of, of spare leaves when uh, players used plastic and rubber bowling balls. When they went to the urethane and these reactive resins balls, what a great try. Oh, that was an excellent try. Well, not only does he not get the spare, but uh, from being on a spare, he lost all that count. So it's like a double open. And there's a good look at that. You see the ball just missed the nine pin. And that actually was played very well. Just not enough of the ball got through the nine. Lenny Borsch is a little high with his shot. Lenny, who operates a pro bowling shop, has won a PBA regional title and owns two Wisconsin non-pro titles. A league average of 220. Cross lane here at the 610. You know what's interesting, Jay, is all five guys on this uh, Sports Street team list their average at 220. Not 221, not 219, but all of them at 220. 
And they have balance, you might well, say. Well, I'd say so. <laughs> and what brings to mind that that what that brings to mind for me is that uh, 220 is about par now as far as bowling scores go. Uh -huh. Used to be 200 was thought of as the uh, as the epitome of a good player. You know, you were a 200 average bowler, you were a good player. Now a strike there from Jim Dill Jr. Here's Gus Yanaris. Gus, who owns Sport Street, an interesting little tavern on Greenfield Avenue up in Wisconsin. I think Milwaukee. that's where Eddie Bauer spends all his time, isn't it? <laughs> Hanging around that place. <laughs> Gus, 37 years old. He's got a lot of experience. Gets the strike. Well, Gus is, uh, if there was ever anybody that can get pumped up and get a team going, Gus is the guy. When we did the, the Open, you heard me mention him as Mr. Excitement. Well, Gus gets his team pumped and keeps them that way. So this team's never going to let down emotionally. You can count on that. His team up by 15 early. Tony Manna, Jr., 24 years of age, also a student at the University of Nebraska, collegiate All-American. Had a lot of lift and loft and movement on that one. You're exactly right, Jay. He really stayed with it, and you'll get a good look at that now. Watch as the ball goes down the lane here. Watch how he stretches out, chases the ball with his hand. That's where he gets all that good rotation. He gets it well down the lane, and then the heavy roll. You could just see the ball turn over. The, the players look at that when the ball gets to that break point, and it turns into the pocket to get a good pin action. Mark Wookerman. Wookerman's 38 years old, a self-employed contractor who's won three Wisconsin non-pro titles over the years. Sport Street qualified with an average of 201, their Baker average 194, and they were four and five in match play. Shows you how competitive the match play is when a team can whoops it. There's a major mistake early. Yes, indeed, and he knew it. You know, part of the spare problems I think that we see the players having uh, in the last few years have been uh, related to the type of bowling ball they're using. I think the resin reactives are harder to control, and being harder to control, a lot easier to miss easy spares. The ball sees either skids or hooks dramatically. Kevin McGeer, 30, 32 years of age, a pro bowler. He's got it on the way, and wow. four nine. Just a little too much heavy hitting pocket power there you might say I guess but uh, Kevin is one of the finer players we're going to take a look at his style here here's another look at that shot he's playing between the third and the fourth arrow he watched the ball go just really grips the lane there's no deflection at all it actually runs over the eight pin spot and there's the four nine he wants to slide the four into the nine get just a little bit of it almost the ice man cometh Right here. This is Dale Traber, bowling center owner, as well as a warehouse manager for J.C. Penny. And his nickname is the Ice Man. And the reason they call him the Ice Man is he very seldom, under pressure, makes a mistake. We're going to take a look at his style here. Here's a guy that's known for his ability to hit the pocket under pressure. He has a basic approach. You see he carries the ball, and in both, most of his approach is the last three steps. You see the shoulder height backswing just a little above shoulder height. But watch the balance for a big man at the foul line. Shoulders over the knee, the long follow-through, perfect balance. Very seldom does he make a mistake. And he's the ideal anchor man. And we mentioned earlier about this could come down again to the anchor man. If it does, we're going to have some excitement. Sports Street has a nine-pin advantage, and we'll return to Weber's St. Charles Lanes right after this. Right now, Sports Street, a six-pin lead after Brian O'Keefe struck for Hoynicki Super Classic, and we had a spare on the part of the Sports Street Classic. We're going to take another look at this one, Jay, just because it was so outstanding. Look at the rotation on that ball. It gets it to clear out to about the six board and all the way back in the last eight or ten feet of the lane to solid in the pocket. That's power, and that's rotation, and that's a little bit of bowling ball, but this young man can play. Nice job by Brian Himmler. Oh, Lenny Borsch. Well, he looked kind of disappointed that it crossed over or almost a little bit embarrassed that he carried that crossover hit, but I'll tell you what, he doesn't want it over. No, indeed. He doesn't want it over. Here's Jim Dill, big, strong gentleman. 
And this is a big name in the Nebraska area in bowling. The, the Dill family is very well known for what they've done for the sport throughout the Nebraska area. 3-6-10, another tough spare here. Ideally, you go cross lane, get the ball between the three and the six. We're bowling on, in case you were wondering, a 35-foot oil pattern with a uh, little more units of oil in the middle. So basically from 10 to 10, you get a little help, but not a lot. And there's a lot of oil on the outside of the lane. There's almost an out of bounds out there. If you get the ball too far to the right, it's really hard to get it back. Great cover there. Gus Yanaris, the 91 Wisconsin State match play championship title. The 89 ABC doubles. Mystery motion here. This guy really gets into it. He's fun to watch. He's exciting. And he's a heck of a good bowler, too. I'll tell you, he can play. I had to get a little extra with some body English there. Just the 6'10", cross lane, Gus, a uh, very good spare shooter. He'll move to the left of the approach with his feet, use the middle of the lane for his target, throw the ball pretty hard and straight at this. Try to get the skid right down the lane. No hook. Just like that. Gus trying to fire up his troops. Here's Tony Manna. Oinky Super Classic qualified with the 198. The Baker average of 197.1. And in match play, they were 5 and 4. Oh my, 467. Now that's. Uh, this is like two big heavyweights uh, kind of punching it out in the first game. This is two game total pins to uh, decide this opening match. Remember, it's total pins. And here's some uh, numbers, Jay. High games, Ebonite Nitro R. 1109, Kelly's Pro Shop at 1197, Lynn's Bowling Contour out of Indianapolis. And the high individual, Charlie Price from Springfield, Illinois. Well, Mana and the Super Hoinky Classic open here, and now it is up to Mark Wookelman. got the strike on the wrong side, but it doesn't make any difference. Looks good on the score sheet. That's what the players would tell you. And here's another look at that shot. You see, the ball really never had a chance to hold the pocket line. It went a little bit early. He actually tugged a little bit, got away with it, got the head pin to go to the wall and kick out the 6-10, and he's a happy man. player there. Yes, sir. Kevin McGear with the strike. We're going to take a look at Kevin McGear going to the foul line and watch the release. The very strong release. Good balance at the line. Great follow through and tremendous rotation. Brings it back from about the eight or nine board at about 50 feet. Ten in the pit. See if he can do it again, Jay. Earl, this week we probably had the most talented, uh, biggest name field ever for the team challenge. Uh, 94 grand champion winners were here. Oh, I thought you meant because of the number of letters like Daryshevsky and things like oh, that. Oh, well, you, you no. mean because they're famous. Like the Dick Ebonite, Weber, yeah, like Ebonite Nitro R, Dick Weber, of course, <laughs> uh, bowling here along with his son, John. We had uh, Leroy Bornhop and Randy Lightfoot and Mike Albee, Brian Goble, Bob Hanley. Oh, and there's a tough miss. Well, it doesn't matter that much, much because it was his count ball, but... Uh, uh, it's the kind of thing where you get a little careless and throw away pin. Here is the uh, Dale Traber, of course. I, you heard me say he's the ice man, and I keep saying this, and, uh, and, and it bears repeating. If it should come down to the 10th frame, we have three extremely talented anchormen bowling uh, in, these, th in these, these two matches, so it could be really exciting. It could be this man against either Rick Steelsmith, or it could be against, of course, Kevin McGear against Steelsmith, or you never know, but uh, either, no matter how it turns out, it's going to be a real fine match. Bob Hanley first in the high series. Uh, Dale Traber right behind. And Dave Barker and Pete Argo. It always fascinates me how 
far teams will come to bowl in the World Team Challenge. We have teams, like you mentioned, from all over the place. And I think, I think the, the, the excitement of the format, not only the excitement of the format, but also the ideal situation of going to Reno, Nevada, bowling in, the, in, the, in that wonderful facility they're going to have opening up in 1995. And uh, the idea of being called the World Team Champions has got all these guys inspired. And that's why we have a sellout every, every tournament. So if you want to bowl... If you're listening and you want to get a team in this, get them together quick and get your entry in because they do fill up fast. Next stop, January 21st, 22nd, Seminole Lane, St. Petersburg, Florida. Looks like we'll have the biggest field yet. Tabor finishes off in nice, nice fashion. And a 32-pin lead for Sports Street after game one. We'll be back with game two in just a moment. Well, here are lineups for this first match. The Contour Power Grips present the starting lineups. The pioneers of the finger grip industry, Contour Power Grips. More pros choose Contour Power Grips. You should, too. Sports Street leading by 32. The Super Honky Classic team. They'll have to rev it up here in game two. And the winner of this First match goes against Hoinky Classic out of Cincinnati, Ohio. And here is the leadoff man for Sports Street, Gary Doroshevsky. That's trouble. Got away with it. You know, talking about the lineups, Jay, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, each team can have as many as seven members. And it's kind of interesting that they, according to the rules of our tournaments, the World Team Challenge, you can sub at any time. But if you do take a man out of the lineup, he has to stay out until that game's over. And of course, you can change your lineup, but only before the game starts. Uh, for example, in this match, between these two games, they could have changed their lineup. In other words, taking the anchor man and putting third or something like that. We've seen that happen on occasion. Yes, we have. <laughs> Brian O'Keefe. 32 pins, <coughs> excuse me, 32 pins is not a big lead, as we know. <coughs> the washout, the one, two, four, Ten. This uh, ideally would be get the ball between the one, two. The head pin will go over and take out the ten. The ball will go right down the line, take out the two and the four. Just a little. Most players like to play this from the left side of the lane. They figure they have a better angle at it. I always like to play it in my strike line and just move my feet a couple of boards and try to keep it in that target area where I know how the ball will react. He's playing on the other side of the lane and he had no idea what it was going to do and he missed the head pin. Lenny Boris Jr. 92 Wisconsin State match game champion. Look good and the seven pin is standing. Well you can see the diversity of angles also as we watch the players they're playing a variety of lines. Uh, and some of that is because of the lane condition, some of it is because of the type of bowling ball they use, and some of it is because of the rotation. Each individual player likes to put on the bowling ball. Some of them like to turn it a lot, some of them like to roll it end over end. And the more you rotate the ball sideways, obviously the farther it goes before it grips the lane and then hooks very sharply on the back. So if you're going to rotate it sideways, like Lenny just did, then you generally want to play farther inside in the lane or more toward the middle and give the ball a little more room. Here's Brian Hemmler. Brian lives in Cincinnati. And of course, Cincinnati, the home of the Super Hoinky Classic, recently won by Sean Swanson. And also, they have that Hoinky tournament that runs, what, about seven, eight, nine months through the year there. I don't know, but it sure pays a lot of money. And here's another look at that last shot by Brian. You can see that great camera angle we had a minute ago where that ball was coming right into your living room. And here's a, here's a look at that from the other angle. And you can see what he can do with the ball. And that's why this young man is going to be a successful PBA player. Gus Yanaris. Oh, and a real problem for Gus. Well, he's got uh, grandma's teeth, I guess, or the Greek church or whatever. He's, uh, he, he ought to know what this is. Anyway, the big five is a common terminology. 
He's got the four, the six, the seven, eight, and nine. And uh, there's only one way to really have a good opportunity to make this, and that's to go four, seven. But if you want to go for the count, which is more important, you'll go at the six, nine, ten. Well, that's right. what Gus is doing here. And that's exactly what he did. <laughs> he went for the count and still got a uh, bad break and kind of chopped it off there and left the ten along with the four, seven. Seven out. Jim Dill, Jr. Jim's a telephone technician. Looking good. A strike for Jim Dill. Maybe that will get the Hoinke Super Classic team going. The lead now is five for Sports Street. We'll return with more of the Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge right after this. I'm here on the bench with Dale Traber, who just labeled the pocket three times out of four. Dale, are you planning on playing lane uh, 25 the same way? Looks like I'm going to move one board to my left. It looks like it's breaking a little bit more. That's the word. Back to you, Jay. All right. Thank you, Damon Cardwell. Lane side here at Weber's St. Charles Lanes. He probably would have talked to Gus Chineris, but he couldn't get him to sit still long enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big, big strike for Mark Wookerman. You know, getting back a little bit to, uh, to the rules of the tournament, just so you're aware, if you're planning to enter, you can have a mixed team. You can have ladies and men together. You can have all ladies. You can have all men. Uh, the rules that are, you must adhere to, of course, is you can only have one touring professional, maybe one other pro and one senior pro on the same team. So uh, there are rules. You might want to ask Tom Bodecker when you get a chance to call. Get your interest in. Make sure you've got the team you want and you can play together. And a strike for Tony Mana Jr. Earl, as we watch these two teams, uh, we really are seeing a variation of styles. Variation of styles. I touched on that a little bit earlier about the, how the players like to rotate the ball. And some of it is obviously they'll play on the lane based on how they like to rotate the ball and how... Uh, the ball creates friction based on the type of ball it is. You see Dale Traver goes very straight with the ball. Uh, it doesn't get any early roll. He kind of lets the friction of the lane, he kind of pushes the ball in the lane, lets the friction of the lane make the ball turn over on the back. So he's very much a controlled player, and that's basically why he's so tough to beat in the clutch. He will make that kind of a shot uh, under pressure just as often as he will without pressure. He just keeps the ball in play time after time. Ford Street Classic ended up sixth in the 94 Grand Championship. And we're all looking forward again to being in Reno and the new facility there next July. Here's another guy that's got uh, a great amount of bowling talent. Uh, we, we're going to get a look at his style here pretty quick, but he can get to that foul line, is so balanced, and get so much on the ball, it's phenomenal. Did that time, didn't he? That's the way you do it. Here's a look at here's a look at him. Watch him from the side now. Watch this. The, he just leans into the shot. You see the first step, the good push away. Watch that. Look at that straight arm, that good high backswing right up above the shoulder. Now watch the long slide and the balance right here. And still get all that rotation on the ball. Look at the good balance. And with that strike, Super Hoinky up by five. a little high the baby split the 310 the ideal thing here is to go cross lane move to the left with your feet use the center of the lane for your target get the ball between the two pins if you hit the three pin on the left I'm excuse me on the right hand side the ball should deflect into the 10 Gary Daroshevsky the 86 Wisconsin bowler of the year <laughs> nicely like done remember this Two games, total pins to decide this match, and right now it could come down again to the anchor man. Here's another look at that last spare shot. Watch the ball hit the right-hand side and deflect into the 10. Uh, just textbook style. That's how it's supposed to be done. Brian O'Keefe, one of the collegians. Two top coaches, Wichita State University's Gordon Vatican and Vincennes University's Gary Sparks are in the field here this week. And the strike for O'Keefe. Now we're getting the excitement we were talking about. Here we go. We're down to the last six frame, five frames. And here's another look at that shot and his reaction. Watch the five pin. 
the middle of the rack, just destroys that rack, Jay. And here's his reaction. We've got a good one going here. We'll return with more as Super Hoinky has a 17-pin advantage back right after this break. Three frames remaining, spare for Lenny Borsch and the spare for Brian Himmler. Now, oh, this Go, is the, the guy here. This is the guy, Jay, that's got to get his team going. They're down by 17 pins. Gus Chineris, he's the emotional leader of this team. If he can get something going, he'll get them pumped. A little high. You know, the three, six, nine, ten. You can see these players, they're kind of down. They're looking down at the floor. They're talking things over. But they, you can see by the, the expressions on their face that they're not really into this right now. They, they feel like uh, things aren't going their way. And obviously, they're not with the Hoinky team all pumped up and uh, stringing strikes. And uh, this is the way it happens in the Baker system. Sports Street was up by 32 after game one. Must make this spare. He got it. Well, that might pick him up. Well, that's a tough shot. It's great cover, and that will get, it, get his team. Uh, there's a sigh of relief from all the other four players on the bench there because uh, if Gus had missed that, they, I'm sure, it felt that the match was over. And, and coming down to the last two or three players again. All right, here we go. Jim Dill, Jr. Whoops. Oh. Now that is a turnaround right there. He got that ball in out there. Remember when we mentioned that outside that second arrow out near the channel is no man's land or out of bounds? That's definitely where he was. We'll take another look at that. This is his first shot again. Watch where the ball is. It hits just around the second arrow, but look where it goes after that. Gets out into that oil and just skids. Never grips the lane till it's too late. Leaves the one, two, eight, ten, the washout. Uh, he's going to try to hit the head pin on the left side, drive it into the ten. The ball will take out the two and the eight. Oh, yes. That is probably the match right there. Well, that kept him from uh, oh, oh, just boy. about going even. If he had That's missed that, right. the match would have been very tight as he picks this up, and what a great clutch shot under extreme pressure at this point. You see it right there, just absolutely perfect cover. And these guys, you know, they're all into this. They are really into this bowling. This is, uh, this is a plus 21 right at this point, and it could come down to the anchorman. And that's if it does, it's going to be Dale Trader, nice man. And that 10-pin uh, wouldn't go down for Mark Wookerman. Well, we may look back uh, at this match to that uh, big shot. You called it a clutch shot, Earl. It certainly was by Jim Dill. That could very well be the lucky roll of the match, you might mm -hmm. say. Even though it wasn't luck, it was talent. It was a necessary spare, no question about it. He had to pick it up. And big Tony Manna now. Still a lot of bowling left. Even though we have only two frames to play for this team, the Hanky team, we still have a frame to play also for S Sports Street. So uh, any kind of a mistake from the Hoinke team and, the, and Dale Traber could be the man that decides this match in the 10th frame. Well, I'll tell you what, he got a break getting the 10 out, but this is still the three six is a very difficult spare for a right-hander. Remember we mentioned that when you go cross lane, the ball wants to skid. If you get it too wide, it'll skid by the three pin. If it starts hooking, it could chop the three off the six. So this is a tough spare. He's using his strike ball, the same ball he just rotated, rolled with. Uh, this ball obviously hooks for him, so he's gonna have to throw it hard, try to flatten it out, keep it from breaking and chopping the spare. Like that. Oh boy. Well, here we are. We're down to the 10th frame again. And uh, Dale Traber will be the man that finishes first. So he has an opportunity to put some pressure on the anchor man for the other team. And this, uh, again, it just seems to happen time after time in the World Team Challenge. It comes down to the guys in the bottom. Five pins, the difference. And if Dale Traber can throw a couple of strikes, their team will take the lead. He needs two strikes here to take the lead. The ice man. Got away from him. One of the few times you'll ever see Dale miss the pocket when he has to hit it. This despair is still very important. It's still less than a mark for the champion, or excuse me, for the, the winner of this match. If he picks this up, he makes, he makes Kevin McGeer have to mark to win the match. Oh, my. Pick it up, he did. All right, count is very important here. He wants to get all of them. 
last shot was very, very close. Well, Errol. watch the five pin. Barely gets a piece of the five pin. One on the right. Just enough to slide it over. <laughs> I think the air got it on the way by. All right, Dale's trying to get all ten here. Fill it up. He's saying, why didn't I throw that the first time? And the ten pin standing. 169. And now... Needs a spare. Kevin McGear, who needs a spare. Needs any kind of a mark here and any kind of count after that, really. But uh, a strike or a spare wins the match. Got to hurry. Oh, wow, it hurt. It did hurry. And, and there is a winner. Kevin doesn't leave anything in the bag when he gets up there. He doesn't, he doesn't get cheated when he throws the ball. He gets all he's got in every shot. So it is the Hoinky Super Classic team. Four fellas from Lincoln, Nebraska, and one from Cincinnati. We'll go into the championship against the Hoinky Classic group who are from Cincinnati. Finish it off, and he strikes out. A final score, Super Hoinky winning by 19 over Sports Street. Other finishers here this week from Dayton, Ohio, Columbia Mez Bar finishing 10th. Schaefer's Pro Shop, St. Peter's, Missouri in 9th place. Tubby's Pub finished 8th. Stardust Bowl, Merrillville, Indiana, finishing seventh. Kelly's Pro Shop of Omaha, finishing sixth. Look at this team, Bob Hanley, Mike Albee, and the longest team name we've seen in the history of the World Team Challenge, finishing <laughs> fifth. And a special presentation made by Dennis Zarneska of the ABC, the Championship World Team Champion Rings. And they went to the group from Ebonite Nitro R that finished fourth. There on the right, Sean Swanson, who recently won that Super Hoinky Classic in $100,000. Classic, who qualified number one, going up against Super Hoinky. And uh, we've got both teams in green. Forest green for Super Hoinky and uh, lighter green for the Hoinky Classic crew. And Brian O'Keefe leads it off. Well, he got everything he had into that one. A lot of rotation on it and a lot of ball speed and a lot of loft. It just didn't quite grip the lane soon enough to get back to the pocket. Super Hoinky winning over Sports Street 389 to 370. And Sports Street had a 32-pin lead after that first game. Well, there's a good, a good reason why we go two-game matches because it gives a team a chance to get acclimated and get caught up. If they, and this way, both teams bowl on both lanes which uh, if you've watched this tournament before, I'm sure you're aware of our format. It's two games, total pins wins the match, and you must bowl a complete game on each lane. And here is John Murph, and here is our Contour Power Grip starting lineup, brought to you by the pioneers of the finger grip industry. More pros choose Contour Grips, and you should too. I even use those, Jay. How about that? The washout, the one, the two, and the ten. And this is, uh, again, first five frames, you got to get acclimated. you got to get so you feel comfortable out there with the television lights on and that little red dot and that TV camera falling you to the foul line. Uh, he's going to try to slide the one into the ten here, cross it over. Murph's 21 years of age. He's in Dayton, Ohio. The advantage here, uh, obviously, would go to the team that won the match previous, which uh, this team you're watching right now did just that by beating Sports Street. Uh, they're a little more relaxed right now, not, a little more acclimated to the lane condition, and they feel more comfortable in front of the television cameras. So it behooves the tournament leaders, the Hoinky Classic team, to just hang on until they can get through these first five or six frames and they feel more comfortable. And you see the tremendous rotation back to the pocket, 10 pins in the pit, and his reaction. 
That mean green ball thrown there by Brian Himmler. First look at John Gaines. John lives in Baltimore, Maryland, 27 years of age, a bowling pro shop owner. Gets them all. John, another one of those big, strong guys that can get a lot of rotation on the bowling ball. He, he, the ball looks like a, like about the size of a cantaloupe in his hand, and he can just rotate it. To be moving farther and farther toward the center of the lane, and as the lanes start to hook a little more, you'll see a breakdown outside. They move farther and farther inside, and if you get it out in that area, you have no chance. That was Jim Dill Jr. who had that big clutch shot for his team. Now he leaves the one, the two, and the eight, and uh, pretty obvious that he has to get this ball on the left side of the head pin. Let the ball take out the two and the eight. Usually you'll shoot this off your strike line, but right now he's a little uncertain of how that ball's going to react, so he'll probably move a little left and play more of the center of the lane and throw it pretty hard and straight. He wasn't real comfortable with that one either. <laughs> Got the job done. Next up for Hoinkie Classic, Mark Dyson, 27 years old, living in Atlanta these days, self-employed bowler, the 87 champion of the 250 Masters Tournament. Two five and uh, another one that is uh, very choppable. Two five, another spare you want to play down if you're right-handed down the left side of the lane and try to eliminate as much of the angle as possible. He's switching bowling balls. Goes to a ball that's uh, a little, uh, little shinier, doesn't hook near as much. He can throw it pretty straight. And that's the idea here. Just hard and straight. Get both pins with the ball. And Dyson picks up the spare. We'll return with the Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge right after this. We're talking to John Gaines. John, you guys started on lane 26, which is the, definitely the higher scoring lane from the first match. Was uh, it a scoring decision? No, not really. Basically, because uh, Murph and I are playing so deep, we just want to kind of get away from the bar turn because we feel like they might break down a little bit too much, and that way we wouldn't have to walk around it. Mm -hmm. Can I say something else? You look mighty fine that tie today, you know? Thank you, John. Back to you in the booth, Jay. <laughs> All right. You are looking good, too. And, and there's a fellow looking very good. Tony Manna, Jr. with a strike. A little humor, a little levity from John Gaines. Yeah. He's, uh, he's obviously relaxed and enjoying himself. Here's Pat Stinnett. Of course, John already got, got his strike, so he can yeah. be a little more relaxed. Pat lives down in Edmond, Oklahoma. We'll be there in April, on April 22nd and 23rd, at the Boulevard Bowl. At the Bowling Pro Shop, at the Boulevard Bowl, and he got them all. He got them all in a crossover. He yes, didn't sir. get out of that ball very cleanly at all. And uh, when he left his hand, it was going to the left, and it stayed there. There's another look at you. See, his swing comes out to the right. And he just never gets, when you get to the foul line too fast, you don't have time to get the swing back in line, the ball's going to go left. And that's exactly what happened there. Kevin McGurr. Whoops, lost his balance. Yes, he did. And he got a break. Uh, that ball turned very quickly, but uh, he did have trouble at the foul line. Yeah, he slipped a little bit there, lost his balance. And actually, he was kind of fortunate to get an easy spare, only the two pin. And also fortunate that he didn't go over the foul line. Uh, right now, that would be kind of costly for his team, even though we are early in this first game of the, this two-game total pins match for the championship. And we got a look now at Rick Steele Smith, who lives in Wichita, Kansas, 30 years old, a pro bowler. He won the 87 ABC Bud Light Masters, 88. PBA Rookie of the Year when he won the Bud Light Masters, if I remember correctly, early was an amateur. That's correct. He was an amateur and turned pro immediately after that. He was he is a graduate of Wichita State University where he got some excellent coaching there. And if you want to copy a game, copy this one. Yes, sir. <laughs> Just copy and copy and copy. Huh? Here's the game I'm talking about. Watch it from the side. Watch the fundamentals in this game. The great arm swing. Watch the swing go back, right to shoulder height, right there, and look at the balance. He loads up with the legs to get all that leverage and strength he needs, and look at the follow-through and the balance. Stays right there. He had a shoulder uh, 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 operation a couple of years ago, and uh, 
used to have a much higher backswing, but he did, he's had and, to uh, cut down on that. Right. He had uh, much higher. He had to, what he had was the uh, rotary cuff injury that he had to have surgery on, and it still bothers him. I was actually I spent some time talking with him about that before. Uh, we went on the air and just to see how it was feeling and if it still bothers him and he said it does at times it gets to the point if you were to make the match play say in a PBA event which is then becomes a 42 game tournament by the end of the week he's in a lot of pain so it, uh, sometimes he has to lay off two three maybe four weeks in a row before he can come back and compete Brian O'Keefe at the line he left the 10 pin Spares, uh, just in general, have not been that difficult when you're going from left to right as a right-hander. The 10-pin, for example, has been a pretty easy spare. The spares that players have had trouble with for the right-handers, if they leave something on the left side of the lane, the 7-pin, the 4-pin, they tend to slide it by. It's, it's, uh, it's a strange uh, occurrence, but that's what happens. You can see how deep Murph is playing. On the lane. I mean, when I say deep, I mean, he's laying the ball almost down in the left-hand channel. Murph, another one, as we mentioned, from Wichita State University, where Gordon Vatican has done such a tremendous job as their coach over the years. Here's another look at that strike ball. Watch this. It's almost in the left-hand channel. He's about maybe on the second board. On the left-hand side of the lane, goes between the second and third arrow, and then out, but not quite enough to get it back. We'll be back to Weber's St. Charles Lanes in St. Charles, Missouri, right after this. Pat Stinnett. Pat has a very unique arm swing, but he gets the job done, as you see right there. And here's the way we stand as we move into the 10th frame of this first game of the championship match. The winner gets the trip to the grand championship and that package that goes along with it. Kevin McCurr. Looking good. Well, that's why he's bowling fifth. That's the kind of guy you want in that last position, the guy you can depend on when you need him to make the good shot, especially in a situation like this. It comes down to this. You've got four guys. There's a lot more pressure on an individual when there's four people depending on him to make that good shot than if you're bowling singles. So if you want to have some fun, you want to really enjoy some league bowling that is exciting, challenging, try the Baker system in your league at home. This really works, and I'll tell you what. Every, every time you bowl, and I don't care if you're bowling first or fifth for your team, you feel that little extra pressure and you're never out of the game. McCurr looking down at the 6'10". Well, he got the big one. He got the first one, the one that really made a difference. He didn't, if, if he'd gone up there and got an open, then he could feel bad. But right now, he doesn't look real happy. No, and he was Seven. very fortunate there. He's he's having a little trouble. He's sticking his on balance. The there. Yeah, yeah. All right, another look at uh, some real talent here, and uh, here's another look at that shot. By the way, you watch the watch the six pin go into the wall, come back and get the ten out, which was just a count ball, so it doesn't matter that much. But uh, he's going to be careful he doesn't get hurt on the approach. Here's Steel Smith. Won the individual gold medal at the 87 FIQ World Championships. Got to hurry. Boy, they can make that ball turnover, can't they? Mm -hmm. Poinky Classic qualified with an average of 200.3 and the Baker average of 193.2. This team among the three finalists with the best match play record, six and three. see the concentration and uh, absolutely no fear in the face of Rick Steele Smith as he gets set to go to the foul line. Watch his head won't move. It'll stay at that same level all the way through the shot. Well, that one had a little too far to come. In the audience today, an old friend, Bruce Plakon, bowling historian, ABC Hall of Famer, longtime curator of the Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum here in St. Louis. Does some writing for the bowling news in the Missouri, Illinois area as well. Well, you get the feeling that 
This is going to go down to the wire. These two teams right now, only two pins separating them after the first game. And Super Hoinky and Hoinky Classic to the last game right after this. So we head to this final game, and John Murph starts it off. That's a nice way to begin. It is, and he's playing so far on the left side, he looks like a left-hander over there. Boy, is he far inside. Qualifying averages, we've mentioned them. There they are again for you. And the best match play record going, as I mentioned, to Hoinke Classic 6-3. And, three. and uh, this was the battle on how they got there. The two Hoinke teams were up there pretty... Wells, Ford Street had to make a big move. Well, this is uh, it's about as tight as a match can be, Jay, at this point. And, and obviously, we've said it so many times in the past, but i got to say it again. You have to fill your frames, and it starts right now. This, this match, only a couple of pins difference, and spares are so important. Here we have the three, the six. Obviously, it doesn't look that difficult, but there's a lot of ways to miss it. Hang on. Whoa. There's one of them. Mm -hmm. You know, Earl, we've talked about the Grand Championship. We'll have $100,000 up for grabs there if we get a perfect game. And if we have a perfect game during the qualifying series, $25,000 from our friends at Bud Light. Well, we have an opportunity right here. They started with a strike. Let's see if John Gaines can keep it going. Boy, I like the way he rolls. Oh. Mm. And that looked very, very good. He has such a pure release. He stays with the ball so well. None of that herky-jerky stuff. He's got those long arms, tremendous strength, big, strong upper body. He's very smooth for a tall man, He isn't is he? very smooth, and uh, he just gets on that ball so clean. His thumb comes out, his fingers stay in it for, seems like, a tremendously long time. And that's where you get that, all that good rotation and direction. He won the 94 Hammer Eastern Open. Look out, look out. Oh, what a mistake there. That's a major mistake. Uh, uh, I don't think he expected that ball to hook at all because the left side of the lane has been so tight that the ball hasn't hooked. And remember I mentioned just a little while ago about the players not having any trouble with spares like the 10-pin for right-handers. But when they shoot something on the left, they tend to miss them. Either slides by or hooks early. Brian Himmler has it on the way. And a strike for Himmler. He's been double tough here today. We're going to take a look at that shot again, Jay, and we're going to look at watch where this ball is before it starts to hook. He lets go of it, goes over the fourth arrow or just outside of it. It gets down the lane at least 50-some feet, 53, 54 feet at that break point before it turns to the pocket. And that's covering a lot of boards in a short period of time. And right back, the strike there for Mark Dyson. Jim Dill Jr. getting ready for his opportunity for Super Hoinky. Well, so many times, our championship match, it comes down to the team that makes the fewest mistakes. Not who can get the most strikes, but who can make the spares, who can fill the frames and make fewer mistakes. And here again, the 10 pin, every spare so important now. This match so close. Earl, this is our last telecast for the holidays and I know on behalf of all of the folks at the American Bowling Congress and all our crew Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all the folks out there oh well we have seen a lot of mistakes here in the last minute and a half well you can imagine uh, like I mentioned before the uh, the emotional stress these players are under right now, uh, especially you can see him hiding his face basically there. Uh, right now, you've got four other guys depending on you to perform. Knowing the pressure you're under, they expect that you can do this, you can handle it. And when you don't, you feel so, so bad, much worse than you would if you're, you're bowling uh, you know, a singles event and made that kind of mistake. You only hurt yourself then. Here you've got four guys that are depending on you, and that's what makes a team event so great. It's so much fun to bowl with four other guys and have a great time, and at the same time, the pressure that's created under the Baker system, where every shot means so much, 
uh, can just get a guy, to get, just gets a guy right, you know, in the stomach where it hurts, and you get all those butterflies. And the professionals, even all the pros we have bowling in this tournament, they love it, but they feel the pressure just as much as the amateurs do. Yes, they do. Tony Manna. You know, Dick Weber's out here in the audience, and uh, he bowled in the tournament with his, his son, John, and and uh, they just, J Pete, uh, excuse me, Dick just loves this event. He thinks it's just fantastic. Yes. There's a good look at the, the grand old man, uh, Mr. Bowling himself, Dick Weber. And an ABC Hall of Famer, of course. He's uh, in every Hall of Fame in the world. I think a couple in another universe. Right. right. Great <laughs> ambassador for bowling. And a fine shot there for Tony Manna. Nine pin lead for the Hoinkey Classic team. Well, we talked about after the first of the year, we'll be in St. Well, it's good to see somebody make a spare, Jay. That's the truth, and I'm sure that uh, uh, right there, uh, it was a very important one. Well, this, this is less than a mark between these two teams. Uh, and when we get down to these final few frames, the last time through the lineup coming up after this shot for their team, uh, that's when the pressure builds. That's when you start to feel like, I've got to perform. I've got these guys waiting to see what I'm going to do. And if I don't perform, they may make me walk home. And some of these teams came from a long ways away. A strike for Kevin McCurr. We'll be back to crown our champion here at Weber's St. Charles Lanes, St. Charles, Missouri, in just a moment. We go down to the wire, and here's John Murph for Hoinkey Classic. Well, he's playing the lane so far inside. He's way out of everybody else's area of the lane, and that one just never, ever made the turnover. It never got back in the line, get back to the pocket. And a very difficult spare, the one, two, four, eight. And here's another look at that. Look where he's laying the ball down, almost in the left-hand channel. The ball gets out into that oily area and never makes the turn back into the pocket area. Tough spare here, and they need every mark they can get at this point. That's a major mistake. First he gets a six count and then misses the spare for eight out. And that's that's a major, major pinfall there. Well, let's see how Brian O'Keefe can counter. O'Keefe, of course, a uh, student at the University of Nebraska. We've got uh, Wichita State and uh, Nebraska rivalry going here a little bit. They've uh, bowled a lot of the Baker system in uh, the college. First time I ever saw it was out in Portland, Oregon in the college championships. Both these teams starting to struggle a little bit here. The 3-6. Again, we've seen this miss three or four times already throughout the telecast today. And uh, it just doesn't seem like anybody wants to take command at this point. Uh, I know they're all trying very hard, but they just can't seem to get it together. And the, the first team that can fill frames looks like it's going to win this because We've seen a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors made, and no one seems to be able to make the spares when they really need them, which is right now. Yeah. Just did cover that, the 3 6. You see the, uh, the little smile there, and uh, more relief than anything else, I think. All right, here's the guy who's probably more relaxed than anybody in the building at this point. John Gaines, the big man. He just gets up there and lets it happen. This year he earned $18,000 in a high roller event. Yeah, well. We talked about uh, Sean Swanson winning 100000 in that Super Hoinky Classic. A lot of money out there. Well, oh. Crossed Go. it over, leaving only the six pin. The lanes, I think, right now are going at any time, any given time, depending on how much dressing is applied to the lanes. And this is uh, the American Bowling Congress decides or determines the lane pattern and the dressing pattern. And it's pretty much the same from tournament to tournament, just depending on, of course, how, how good the surface is. But they will go through a transition. And that transition happens by the oil being moved around by the bowling balls, picked up and moved down the lane and away from the beginning of the lane, which is the head area. When that happens, the players have to make adjustments. And it seems like the lanes right now are going through that transition. And unfortunately, it happens in the last five frames of the championship match. So the players are all struggling, trying to find a line. This is the one guy that's been able to keep it all the way through. And he's done it again. Oh, Himmler has really, really been on target. Brian Himmler with a big strike. 
Well, I think he's four for four today or something like that. And here's another look at that style and that rotation. You can see the tremendous right to left rotation he gets on the ball. That ball almost finished too high and too hard. And you can see him saying, stay out there, stay out there. And that's just a little high. Got a break, leaving only the 6-10, and uh, it could have been a lot worse. The 7-pin, one of the last pins to go. So, again, he'll switch bowling balls, go cross lane, and hopefully cover the 6-10. Mark Dyson, the Hoiki Classic team that qualified first. Picks it up. And here's McDill, or Jim Dill, excuse me. Big Jim Dill. Big Jim Dill. You're right there. Very strong. He looks like he could have helped that Nebraska football team a little bit. Maybe a pulling guard, something like that, huh? Yes, sir. Big guy. Got to get lucky. The baby split, the 310. And as we get into the last few frames here, this is the eighth frame for his team. Uh, it, it is imperative that you fill those frames, and Jim Dill here needs to fit the ball between the three and the, and the ten, and uh, hopefully the ball will bounce off the three into the ten. They're up by 18 right now, super hoinky. And this, if he were to miss it, would bring the match back to less than a mark. That's so. right. And that's how he, that's what happened. Well, here we are, coming back. Uh, both teams going backwards a little bit. It's just whether who's going to who's going to hang on long enough to win this thing as, as it ends. Who's a survivor going to be more than who the winner is? That's I think. the truth. And there you see it. Five pins the difference. Super Hoinky in the lead. Here's where you want it. This this is the important man in the lineup right now. If he can set up the anchor man, get him a strike to work on right here. Oh. Almost got them all. The team that can do that has a big advantage on the other team, and uh, it doesn't didn't happen there. So we'll see what can happen for Super Hoinky if they can set up their anchor man. Need the spare. Take your time. Make your spares. And Pat Stinnett gets it, and now it will be on the shoulders of Big Tony Mana. Well, Tony knows the situation. I'm sure every player down there knows the score exactly right down to the pin in their own minds. And Tony knows that if he can strike here, it would be so much easier for Kevin McGear in the 10th frame, only needing maybe one strike to win the tournament rather than two or three. Look at the concentration in this man's eyes. Concentration, maybe even a little of a, you might say, fear. Because he knows how important the shot is, but he can. He's been here before. Oh my! What a great shot and almost a bad break. The four nine was there, and uh, depending on what side of the ball return you're sitting on, that's a sigh of relief or it's oh my, we almost had it. And here's another look at it. A little high in head pin, but the tremendous power he had in the rotation cut through the pins, leaving the four nine briefly. The head pin came off the wall and kicked out the nine. Now you can feel relieved, but at the same time you better get up there and concentrate on picking up this spare. Good job. Well, we talked about it how many times, and here it is. Down to the anchor man again. And the first one up, one of the finest young players to come around in a long time, except for that big injury, Ricky Steelsmith. He knows the situation. He needs some strikes. Only seven pins difference at this point. Got to hurry. Too much. Sometimes, I'll tell you something, Jay, I, I feel very certain that Mr. Steele Smith will pick up this the three pin, this spare. And sometimes when you are watching on the bench and you're getting up and get ready to bowl, you're thinking, I'm probably going to need a couple of strikes to win this match. And when he, he doesn't get his strikes and you feel, well, maybe I only need a mark, that could be harder to get sometimes than just and then going up trying to get the strike. Yeah, the wheels are really turning at yeah, this point. Yeah, then you start thinking, well, how do mm -hmm. I play safe? And safe, trying to play safe, as you know, never works. You have to be aggressive. Needs them all. Pin count very important right now. All right. And a 10 standing there. 
what it comes down to is uh, we need a mark here. We need good count and a mark. Uh, and it's Kevin McCurr. Big Kevin, and uh, he performed well, remember, in the first match in the 10th frame. Let's keep in mind, let's, let's just watch and see what happens. Needs a mark to win. How's that? And how's that for excitement? Look at that boy, team from oh off the boy. bench. We have a winner, Jay. They are the winners, and McCurr comes through in fine fashion. We'll be back right after this. Score, and here are our champions. Congratulations, guys, and good luck to you in Reno. Our next television.